Tankard Master of Castigations is actually not that hard of a boss. I'm going to explain everything you need to know and the moves you need to look out for so that you can beat this boss with incredible ease, so let's get into it. Per usual, this boss is going to have two phases, and of course the second phase is going to be harder than the first, but let's start with the first phase and what you need to look out for. So as you enter the room, you're going to notice that he has a golden halo over his head. You need to find the Umbral Parasite, and you need to exercise it first and foremost. After you do that, his attacks are not going to be as powerful, and he is going to be more manageable within this first phase. So in phase one, he's going to have a total of three to four moves that he's going to repeat over and over again, and most of them are very easily dodgeable, but you do need to watch out for one or two. So my advice to you is to stay as close to the boss as possible. A lot of the bosses within Lords of the Fallen, when you're too far away, actually become a lot harder. So the closer you are to the boss, the easier his attacks are to dodge, and he's not going to do as many of his attacks. The last thing that I'm going to say before I show you his moveset and what you need to watch out for is be patient. Look for those very small windows where he telegraphs his moves, you can get behind him, and then you can hit him once or twice, and then move away as he starts another move. The one thing that kept getting me over and over again was I would be overconfident, I would get greedy for hits, and then I would get killed. So the very first move you're probably going to see is the sweeping strike where he strikes twice with his weapon, swinging back and forth. The easiest way to dodge this is just to strafe to the side and get behind him so he completely misses both attacks. This also will leave a window of opportunity for you to strike him once or twice, and then look for the next move. The next attack is when his weapon's gonna light up with Radiance, and he's gonna slam it directly overhead. Once again, all you need to do is strafe to the right or left, and get behind him to get an attack off and dodge this move. Another window of opportunity to attack this boss is gonna be when he lifts his shield up over his head and slams it into the ground. Typically, you have enough time here to charge a heavy attack and hit him with it, and then move out of the way. Now, the only time I found it was easier to be farther away from the boss is when he does this move, where he raises his weapon over his head and casts a Radiant spell that's going to follow you around the map, all you need to do is just strafe to the left, go all the way around him, and every single one of these attacks should miss you, but be careful because he does have a habit of lunging at you once you're dodging these, so it's just a little bit more to keep track of. As you can see in the fight, I am constantly running around him in circles because he typically has a blind spot on his shield side, and you can get around him and hit him a few times between his normal attacks, allowing you to whittle him down slowly but surely while being safe enough to not take any damage. Now at some point when his health gets low enough, he's gonna start casting Radiant spells as he smashes his shield into the ground, causing a shockwave of Radiance to come out from the ground where he strikes. All you need to do is time this correctly, and as he smashes, dodge into the Radiant shockwave, and you are gonna get missed by it completely. Now if you've followed all the instructions here, at this point you should be through phase one and get him down to no health, in which case phase two is going to start, which is a whole different moveset and an entirely different boss. Phase two is going to be the tankard's brother, Renhold, and this guy is some sort of twisted abomination, so when you first start the fight, he's going to be transforming into his second form. You do have a moment to get off an attack or a few heavy attacks before you need to start worrying about his moveset. With this phase of the boss, you do need to stand on his side. He typically cannot hit you when you are on his side between his legs, so if you can stay there, you'll be able to get this boss down no problem. He does seem to be incredibly difficult at first because of how he moves and because of the different moveset than phase one, but overall, if you can stay in that window, you're going to be just fine. Now, as you saw in the beginning of phase two, the first move you need to worry about is when he lunges at you with his arm to try and grab you. It's easily avoidable. However, if you don't avoid it, he's going to grab you and start chomping on you, and that's going to take away the majority of your health. To get away from this move, all you need to do is dodge to the right at just the right time, and he's going to miss you completely, leaving himself open for an attack. He's also going to start using fire attacks in this phase, and he will shoot magma out of his mouth to make fire spots on the ground. Obviously, don't stand in the flame, or you are going to get completely torched. He does have a few stomp attacks and lunge attacks, where he will cause smoke to billow all over the ground. He's going to use this as a smoke screen to try to confuse you, and lunge through the smoke so he can get a hit off on you. Go ahead and back off so you can see what he's doing, and then you'll be able to see the trajectory of his attack. You will notice, though, when you get to too far away, his moveset will switch up, and he will start shooting fireballs at you, and he also does this charge ability that is very easily telegraphed, and you can move to the right or left to completely dodge it. This does open up windows of opportunity for you to hit him every once in a while, so as I said in the first phase, just be patient and look for those windows where you can get one or two hits off, and you will slowly but surely build up damage on him. He's also going to do a move where he does a handstand and does a little bit of a stagger stomp onto the ground. This is another attack where it's easily avoided, but if you don't get the timing right, he's going to hit you every time. You'll you're doing a good job when you get him to about half health, and he's going to bend over and do some sort of primal roar, causing shockwaves to go out all over the place. This does not
not hurt you, but it will stagger you a little bit. This is an opportunity for you to get a few hits on him before he starts doing the second portion of the second phase. This part of the fight is all about avoiding fire attacks. He's going to spew fire out of his mouth. He's going to jump around the arena, causing massive pools of fire. If you can avoid these attacks and not get in the fire and get any ignite damage on you, it's going to be a lot easier. I would recommend bringing some burn cure or burn resist into this fight with you because it's going to help you out a lot. You're also going to see a move in this phase where he slowly starts to stagger walk towards you and then he's going to flop down on the ground trying to crush you. You can dodge to the right or left or you can go right through his legs and then after he flops down he opens himself up for an attack. Like I said previously if you just stay on his side and continue hitting him that direction you should not get hit by any of his attacks but eventually he will go onto the ground and a red light will beam out of him. I squandered this because I thought it was an attack but it turns out it's just him being weakened and you can hit him as many times as possible until he gets back up. Other than that there are no moves that you're going to see in phase two. They are all repeat of what you see at the beginning of phase two and he is going to have fire incorporated. This fight is all about looking for the windows of opportunity in which you can attack the boss and being incredibly patient. This game wants you to think that the boss's moveset is crazy erratic and it's super hard to hit him but it is not if you look for these windows. And guys that is going to be it for this particular boss guide. I hope you guys found value in it and I hope you're enjoying these guides. Let me know down in the comments if there's strategies that you guys use that would help out the community because overall what we want to do is beat these games, get through them so we can start New Game Plus and continue to have a super fun time. If you have not subscribed to the channel, feel free to hit the sub button and the bell notification on your way out. I would appreciate it. We are on our way to 20,000 subs on this channel, which I'm super excited about. So thank you so much. And until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.